VIP Access access. with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome to VIP Access episode 10. This is my podcast where I sit with different artists and creatives from all over Africa and also Kenya. I'm very happy to be sitting down with an amazing singer, songwriter. She's an indie soul artist. I've loved her music from the very first time I heard her. She's quite young, just put her foot into the industry and continues to grow. And from her recent wins, we know that she's set to take over Africa. She's actually just been crowned the best female artist in East Africa at Afrima Awards. I'm talking about Modaka. Hey, babe. Thank you. Hi. How are you? I am good. Yo, congrats. You're sitting on a crown or it's on your head as the best female artist in East Africa. Yo, how (laughs) does that feel? Crazy. It feels not very real, (laughs) but it feels nice. Thank you. Yeah, it feels good. Isn't it amazing to, you know, not finally, it's not like you're not going to be, it's not like you're not going to get another award, but... Doesn't it feel good after all the work you've put in in the in the recent yeah. years to f- to finally get this type of um, acknowledgement and and win? Yeah, it feels it feels very overwhelming actually because as a new artist, there are so many other categories that I should have been nominated for. It's the most promising breakthrough, but then to start with the best female artist, it's it's very very humbling I think, but it's also very. It's a relief on my part. It's it's very validating. I think that's the word. Yeah. Yes. Very yes. Yes. So when you're in Dakar mm-hmm. um, for the awards, like, did you think you're gonna win? Did you prepare a speech? No. <laughs> my I think I had the worst speech because I was I was shaking. I was confused. I was actually waiting for them to be like, actually, no, it's not you. Because even when I was walking to the podium, I was like, wait. Just just to confirm, because I wasn't sure. So I didn't know that I was going to win. I was actually just going to have fun and make the most of it because there are a lot of artists who actually couldn't go. Mm. And uh, so I was just going to make the most of it, have fun, travel. Um, so I didn't know until they announced my name, which was uh, very, very shocking. Very, very shocking. Yeah. It's, it's just it's that moment when they announce your name and you actually don't hear and guys are like, yeah, it's you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because they don't even speak English. So, and I think they don't have like a, that TH. So mm. when they say Mudaka, it's Mutaka. Mm. So at first I'm like, is that even me? I don't <laughs> think that's me. But then with uh, the people I was with, the Wanavokali uh, people, mm-hmm. uh, group members, they turned to me and I was like, oh, okay. So it is my name. So it was, it was, it was crazy. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I think you started 2023 on a very good note. Yeah. Um, so let's get into this interview and I want to get into the person, Mudaka, the artist, mm-hmm. the type of sounds that inspire you, the type of music that you make. Um, it's indie soul music. It's um, yes. sometimes R&B. So yes. could you tell me a little bit about your inspirations and mm-hmm. what influenced your sound to be what it is today? Uh, yeah, so I think initially when I was going into writing my own music, I wanted a genre that I felt like I could define for myself. So I put the words contemporary in the soul because I thought it would give me freedom to operate within, because I defined it for myself. So I mm. thought I can only define what that is. Yes. So sometimes it's R&B, it's reggae, it's soul music. Um, but now I think I'm I'm kind of switching a bit and trying Afrobeats and trying um, different things that maybe wouldn't, uh, be the norm for what people have known me before. Mm. But I think because it's still me, uh, it can still fon- fall under contemporary indie soul. Um, and yeah, I think changing changing that has been has been very easy. I think even as growing as a songwriter, it's 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 natural to want to explore to different yes. sounds. And even as you collaborate with other artists, you gravitate towards what they want, and it's it, it becomes natural. Yeah, yeah. And you started your music career at a young age. Yeah. You know, by the age of 19, you know, stakeholders, industry stakeholders were starting to notice you. You yeah. know, people already wanted to sign you and, and so on and so forth. Yes. Um, when is the earliest you can remember, you know, being serious with your music or taking it as a profession? And what mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of support did you get from your parents or um, whoever, you know, was um, kind of giving you direction or helping support your dreams? Um, the earliest I took it uh, seriously was uh, right after high school 
when I joined Sorti Academy. This was in, I finished high school in 2016. 2017, I joined Sorti Academy. Um, but I've wanted to sing ever since I was in primary, class four to be specific. Mm. So from then on, I always told my parents I want to be a, a musician, a singer. And you used to sing in school? Yes, I used to sing in school. Actually, I used to have like a duo. We were, we were two and then we were four and then it was just me. <laughs> so I was never even meant to be a solo artist, a solo performer. I was used to just, you know, being... Yeah, within, among the group members. Exactly. And then you're left alone and you're like, what do I do with this passion? Exactly. Now I'm like, now what do I do? But it, it was, I think the, the helpful thing was being in Saudi Academy. They were very uh, patient and very nurturing with the process of even songwriting. So as of 2018, when I started writing my own songs is when I took it very, very seriously and started performing as not just a random singer, but a contemporary indie soul yes. performer and just establishing myself that way. And um, I'm very fortunate to also have very supportive parents. I think it was inevitable because they knew I always wanted to be a singer. So they weren't like opposed to it at all. Um, I remember even when I was supposed to join uni, they I wanted to do Saudi first. So they mm -hmm. were like, okay, so I just do it. And then afterwards do... Wow. Uh, they let uni. you attend Saudi Academy before starting uni. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like as even as a, as a learner, I, I can't multitask. And especially with music, I didn't want to be in school and performing because mm -hmm. I felt like one would fall at the wayside. Of course. And I wanted to focus on music. So fortunately or unfortunately, I started doing so many live performances. There wasn't time to do uni. And then um, in 2020, uh, I got signed. So there was never time to be in school. Mm. But they have been very supportive. I also have cousins who sing and perform who have helped me also. Nice. So yeah, I think the foundation was very, was very good to me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and they continue to support you. Yes, yes, they do. They do. So you talk about um, getting signed in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, you were signed to Universal uh, Music Kenya. Yes. The contract has now ended. Yes. Um, if you look back at the signing, how was it? What did you learn? Because you actually got signed at quite an um, young age. Yes. Um, you know, not with so much experience, but then... Yeah. When you get signed into this kind of deals, it's part of the experience you're garnering as you move forward in the industry. Yes. So what what was your time like with the Universal team? Uh, my time was very nice. I, I met them in 2018. So I was about 19 at the time. But then we didn't sign until 2020. So I was about 21. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't released any music by myself prior to that. I was very much a live performer. Mm. So I would be out performing on stage in uh, hotels, different places. That's who I was as an artist. I mm. never really wanted to do studio. So they came to one of my performances and saw and offered their contract. So I'm very excited. I'm like, it's universal, of course. I'm going to do whatever you all want me to do. I'm going to go to studio. I'm going to record. And it was very fun. I, I didn't realize I actually enjoy creating music in that format mm. because I'm so used to being with the band and making arrangements. So being in studio was very liberating also. Nice. So it was very nice. They introduced me to a lot of aspects of the industry that I never would have known before. Things like marketing and like talking to different people for interviews and uh, just overall being in charge of your music and knowing how to get publishing, things like yes. that. I, I didn't know and I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for them. So it was a very nice experience. You were supposed to do two albums, mm -hmm. um, but um, something happened in between. I only managed to do one project. Okay. So that was Sunshine, yes. which came out in 2021. 2021. Yes. Okay. Um, ah, my pride and joy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm very grateful to them specifically for Sunshine because I feel like it has opened so many doors for me. It's what got me my Afrima nomination course, in my brain. Of course. So it has been a, a beautiful relationship and... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to get the most from it and I hope they also feel the same. Okay. Yeah. And um, in terms of moving forward, now that you already got this signing, you mm -hmm. had an album out, um, you had a chance to review what worked, what didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, do, you st do you still want to, you know, get signed to another label or some sort of management or how do mm -hmm. you see your career moving forward or how do you feel like um, this is the best way for me to move forward? Um, I don't think I would like to do a label for now. I think yeah. um, the, the, the most hard thing, the hardest thing to do right now is because I'm doing everything myself. Mm. And I mean everything. So I don't have a manager. I don't have any kind of representation. So that's what I'm really looking for, even if it's just one or two people who can help me without a contract, without or even with a contract. Yes. Um, but just to have that load off of me, because especially with the win, I got so overwhelmed with, um, interviews and, and shows and things I can't really navigate myself and also stay creative. Mm. So that is what I'm looking for um, and hoping to get, um, to just get genuine support 
um, from people who are in the industry or who just can give me guidance. Um, I think uh, being in a label just shows you maybe the limits and also the expansiveness. I don't know yeah. if that's a word. The, the just, horizon, maybe. Exactly, yeah. So I would like to try out this other side of being independent, owning my master's also mm. for the first time, seeing what that is like. Um, so yeah, I was just definitely looking for two or three people who can just help me navigate mm. and, and, and see what we can do by ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, as a female in the industry and especially a young female, mm -hmm. um, have you encountered a lot of challenges in terms of support? Because apart from the support, um, from universal and say mm -hmm. your parents, mm -hmm. um, are you missing a lot of other support and what other support are you missing? What's the gap you feel like is in the industry, especially affecting um, women? Mm -hmm. ah, that's a very good question. I think the the biggest challenge or the thing that I feel is lacking, especially for new artists, mm -hmm. is opportunities. From performances especially, I think as a full-time artist, the biggest way that you can make a living is through performances. Yes. And even before, what's crazy is before the Afrima, I would knock on so many doors, send so many emails, be like, I could open for you. I could just do it for free just to get the chance. But then no one really wanted to open up their space. And I think as a as a young female artist, especially if you're naive, if you're not very um, good at uh, maybe communicating with with people who've been in the industry, it's hard mm. to get that room in. Mm. And um, there are also people who will also take advantage of that of of you being a female and and want to, especially if you're alone, if you don't have like a big um, uh, group of people, maybe mm. or just the appearances that you it's just you. It's, yes. it's easy for them to be like, ah, oh, okay, we'll we'll do this and do that, but then not really follow up. Um, but I definitely think performances, performances are, are, are very critical for an artist, even mm -hmm. just to grow as a performer. Who are willing to just help you or even just give you a 10, five minute set. It doesn't cost them anything. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's, it's, it's very, it's very disappointing when you. I just don't want to give female artists this, the chance. So yeah. it's, 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 it's hard. And I them up to be more receptive receptive not just after someone has done something yeah is when you now come back and be like oh okay we can give you this 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 but by then it's like i don't even want to because yeah. you didn't even want to to listen to me in the first place so yeah i think if you can open up that space of performances mainly i think it could go a long way and it's it's shocking me that you're you're, you're talking about the performance space is not as open as they should be. Yeah. And especially for an artist like you, who's clearly a performing artist, like mm -hmm. when someone sees like a past performance or even listens to your sound, you have the voice, you have the personality, you have oh, the you. band. <laughs> so I'm actually very surprised that someone would lock their doors onto you or maybe ignore you or not get back. Um, because you are actually a performing artist. So yeah. my question is, the few gigs that then are happening, mm -hmm. are they also making sense? Because there are some gigs where you go with your band yeah. and you also need to pay your band yeah. for rehearsals, for the performance. Yeah. You need to pay for the rehearsal space. Like, yes. Is it making sense or what do we need to do to make sure that even the live performances that are happening are mm -hmm. making sense? Um, I think in uh, maybe kind of fan interaction it's very very helpful but then obviously it's not making financial sense because as you said the rehearsal spaces you have to pay for if you if you want to look good you have to pay for that makeup um also pay the band so it's 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 difficult especially if you're not known i think that's the biggest challenge yeah. if you're not known and and they don't trust you enough to want to even listen to your music yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes it hard for even them to even pay you enough mm. because they think ah maybe i'll just give her or him something that will just appease yeah, them yeah, yeah. but then at, you find at the end of the day you've gone at a loss because mm. you yes you've interacted with people but that also won't make you um won't sustain you as mm. an artist so you find i've even found out after the 2020 so many of my fellow artists aren't even performing anymore because we used to get uh that kind of drive from performances yes. so when you come back even now and all the organizers want to do is people is people who are bigger than you which is understandable of course um but yeah, I think we can try and make it make sense for the smaller person because you never know who may that be, they might become. They could be the yeah. next Afrima winner. Yeah. So <laughs> it's 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 important to just try and um, be open to giving them a chance and yeah. giving artists what they're worth. I think if you can see an artist is putting in a lot in their performance, I think it's only fair. Even if if it's a standard fee, that's fine. 
but I think for 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 the upcoming artists, I think it's very important also to just give them that motivation mm. to keep going. Mm. Yeah. But throughout all this, um, you know, there's always things not working properly in the industry, then some working, then something like yeah. this happens, you win an award. Through all this, how have you managed to still keep um, your focus, you know, keep performing, mm -hmm. keep recording, keep, um, keep loving being in the industry? Because I've seen a lot of artists even retreat and say, oh, I'm taking a break for a year or two yeah. because it's just putting me down. But you seem to have managed to have that excitement and drive and passion. Mm -hmm. Like you always send me messages and you're very excited. You're like, when can we meet? I'm always bothering when you. When should we work together? Like, <laughs> uh, when can I come to your office? Like, I, like <laughs> this expose me. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, it's not, it's not even about like you messaging me, but like <laughs> there's this fire in you that's yeah. burning. And I just want to know more about how you maintain to keep that fire burning like that, despite all the ch challenges that might be the yeah. case. I won't lie, it's not always easy and I'm not always um, as excited. I think sometimes when you just add an exclamation and an emoji, <laughs> it can help. But even when you're just in bed feeling like, hey, I don't even want to wake up today, but let me just try. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's I think my listeners are very, very encouraging. You earlier you mentioned um there's a post I made when I was feeling very frustrated about um things not moving the way that I wanted them to. And I feel like my listeners, I have a very intimate group of people who um, listen to my music and support me. So they send me messages all the time encouraging me. Mm, so even when, nice. yeah, I, I actually have the best, the best, I don't like calling them fans. I have the best listeners who are very invested in, in, in what I write and in how I express myself. So they help me a lot. My parents also, my dad especially, I think I come to him so many times. I'm like, I dad. See, we just go find a job somewhere because we, we even talked about it this year at the beginning of the year. My new year plan was to find a job mm -hmm. um, because it's, it, especially financially, it gets to a point where you feel like I've spent like seven, eight years of my life doing this. Mm -hmm. And by now my peers are graduated. They are now working, but mm -hmm. I'm still pushing this music agenda. So I think also when you think I have nothing, okay, not nothing, but I. this is what I want to do. This is this is what I've always wanted to do. So the, there hasn't really been a plan B for me. Mm. So that kind of keeps me going where it's like, it's this or nothing. I love that. So I have to try to do I it love for... That. Yeah. And now that you said eight years, we I had um, Pilani Bubu, who's an artist ah. from South Africa in the last episode of my podcast. And she mm -hmm. was talking about someone having advised her that it takes 10 years for yeah. for for something to come into its own mm -hmm. you know to build a brand to start seeing the success of whatever you've been putting your hands to so i think you are getting there you know mm -hmm. small wins here and there even the afrima uh, is a big thing yeah. which i'm celebrating you for and you should Thank celebrate you. yourself and never forget that um <laughs> it's not an easy feat to it's be not. the best female artist in east africa and i think that also allows a lot of other people to want to discover you listen mm -hmm. to your music where's right. the money coming from that's a very good question i'm also wondering <laughs> i'm also wondering where the money is. i also question. don't know <laughs> like where's the money <laughs> um well yeah uh, do you want to talk like exact figures because um i mean it's up to you whatever you want to okay. talk about but i think if we are as open as we can yeah it's really it would be really nice so even the okay. artists who are listening and want to get into the industry know exactly what to expect yeah um they should probably know like you don't put out a song and expect a ah, check of okay. 500k. Yeah. Or even shillings. Exactly. So, um, okay, that's very, very important. So what happened is um, with my contract, um, obviously, I think even with, uh, with with DSPs, if you have access to your own accounts for play, for um, streaming, mm -hmm. there's a way that you can get your money back from royalties. So with me being under a label, I can only go and... Uh, uh, check in on my finances mm. a certain time in the year. So uh, before we terminated, I, I had one of those meetings. And fortunately enough for my previous uh, project, Sunshine, it had an overall of about 300,000 streams on all platforms, which for someone who is not known and with virtually no promotion or marketing, that was a big deal. Mm. So um, from that, it, it makes you feel like, okay, maybe I can even get like, like a 10K, 20K somewhere. But then um, with the, the way the industry works, by the time the money trickles down to me, after it goes to all the different people, I was owed uh, 1,716 shillings and like 80 something cents. Yes. One, 1K. 
that is what I am uh, do. Now you're one K actually because I have a, a, a producer and uh, other people who worked on it, like instrumentalists who we decided to do split sheets. Are also we are supposed to go and night your one K. And this one thousand that was your royalties from the album yes. was from a period of how many months? This was from when it came out in September, September twenty twenty one. Yeah. Till the last quarter, which was to December twenty twenty two. Like a year and like two months, three months. That's ridiculous. It is crazy. It is crazy because when you when you look at all the facts, um, with the, with the with the label, I was doing so much. I was doing my own marketing. I was doing my own sourcing for interviews. Mm. I was getting my own shows. I was doing everything by myself. And as a new artist, I was obviously don't have as many connections. So Pia Yotu Nikungana Natuku just throw in favors, ask you know, um, pleading with people to just mm. be like, just let me. I promise. When I become Beyonce, you know, <laughs> so it's 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 it was I was at first when I had the three hundred thousand, I was like, "Where, Basi? You know, we made it." But then after getting my uh, thingy back and it said a thousand, I was like, "Okay, now." It was very very disheartening, and that's just the royalty bit of it. Now you can imagine I'm I'm supposed to get my money from royalties. Um, and then also maybe get performance performances, and then maybe that pays me, and then I pay the band. So at the end of the day, it's not coming together. It's, it's not it's not my thing. It's 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 not working. And if you don't have like big sponsorships and things like that, it's you really struggle even as an artist with with um now and then also the different uh, platforms pay differently. So mm. you find something like YouTube has very little returns. And um, also other uh, platforms differ in, in how much you make yes. back. So it you have to really be making the big, big, big hits to be able to get up something that mm. is that is worth living off of. Mm. So that is, I also don't know where that, I think at this point, if it wasn't for my family just believing in me and and thankfully also they are pretty much just keeping me going, mm. it's it wasn't. I think that situation sense. also is really um, inspiring an artist or driving an artist towards independence. Yeah. So that you feel like I'm in charge of my business, I'm mm -hmm. in charge of my distribution. If I get one thousand from that, the whole of that one thousand is yeah. mine. Yeah. But if I only get five hundred and I need to split it with you. Yeah, but then you also know. if 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 I was independent and I had that many streams, I would obviously be do more than the one thousand because yeah. it has to go back to the people. Exactly, and, exactly, yeah. exactly. So we don't even yeah, know how I use, much. I use one thousand just as a <laughs> just as a figure. But it is but the figure. You would, but you wouldn't make <laughs> one thousand if yeah. you were um, independent, getting all the money from your streams. Yeah. It would be definitely way more. Yeah, and I also know record labels sometimes are cutting off some of the money they're yeah. receiving off some of the expenses they put on you. Yeah, studio and Exactly, and yeah. exactly. So, so so, I understand that bit. Um, I guess the next stage of your career is a lot of independence or how do you see it? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, technically, I feel like I have been independent for a really long time. It's been very good to have them distribute my music and obviously my music wouldn't have reached as many people if they didn't do the distribution part which I'm very grateful for. But considering I end up doing so much of the, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Even when you were signed. Even when I was okay. signed. It's, 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 it's very difficult to even now consider myself an independent artist because if anything, now I have to find distribution. Yes. Now it's even, you know. So I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't want to lie and say I have all these big plans mm. coming. I'm just hoping, uh, like I said, I, like, if I get a person or two who can help, Mm -hmm. I think that's just the base, the, the basis. If I can just help, get help to to manage some of the things, mm -hmm. I think then maybe I could start picking up and and now even get the performances that can pay and yes. even get more streams from that and maybe pay back the label, get some for myself for my band, and yeah, just keep that going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I think I've really enjoyed listening to you and uh, thank you so much for being very honest. Yeah. Um, you know, with the stage. With with what's happening in your career, you're like, I just won this major award, but at the very same time, I still feel like I need so much more support. I think yeah. that's the reason why I'm doing this conversation because sometimes people see you pick an award or win something or look so good and they think it's always a perfect picture, but yeah. it's never perfect for everyone. Like I've seen even Beyonce's documentary, like I've mm -hmm. seen her come and watch some things that were being edited or watch how a show was prepared and she's like, this doesn't work yeah. like and you guys are not doing anything so it's 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 normal for creatives not to be happy mm -hmm. with some of the people they are working with and i think that's 
for me, that shows that you know exactly who you are and where you want to go. Yeah. And it's a good sign because when you meet the right team, um, and they're on the right direction. Yeah. You will know because you you'll you'll be like, this is where I want to be. Yeah. So knowing that you're not where you want to be yeah. is a sign that you're heading towards the right direction because you're like, that's not where I want to go. So I have a very um, strong feeling about you and. I think it's going to be a, a great year, a better year. I'm Thank looking you. forward to all the other songs and releases that you might be preparing for us. What's mm -hmm. the five tips you'd, you'd give to an artist on how to package your sound mm -hmm. for a recording and for live performances? Okay. Uh, I hope I can remember all, the, all of that, but you can correct me or remind me if I forget to, to mention something. Um, uh, oof, advice. First of all, I think... The advice that I would have wanted to hear, uh, which I've never had, because it's always pray, work hard, which is very important. <laughs> but I think what I would have wanted to hear is you're doing okay. You're doing the best that you can, and that's enough for now. Um, keep, keep, keep that. You should be your biggest supporter, regardless of what doors that you knock on and they say no. So you should just keep going. It's, it's okay. It's okay to not feel like doing it today. That's fine also. Um, you are doing very, very well so far, first of all. Um, for sound, I think, actually, <laughs> when I first got signed, I, there was this overwhelming uh, question of, so you find your Afrobeats? So you just do something that's more marketable? Mm. And I'm like, you all knew what you were doing when you were looking for me. You, you know what I was, the sound that I was doing. Mm. So then why now do you want me to change? So I think... You know your sound. You know what you want to write about. Especially if you're a songwriter, please write the so write those songs, and um, you know what's best for you. So whatever you want to start off with doesn't mean that's what you have to end up with. Like me, I was doing a lot of soul. I was very inspired by the likes of Whitney and Mariah. So I wanted to be, you know, the vocalist, and and I I still think I am. I still I still do like to to sing and perform that way. Um, but then it's also okay if you want to change. You don't have to define your sound a specific way. You don't have to put a, a tag on it if, if you don't feel like any of the tags really fit you. Um, but then it's also very important to learn from um, the people that you admire and your peers. The, the live performance shouldn't always be the same as the studio. And I think that's what I love about live performances. It's always fun to change the sound. Um, whatever feels right to you, if you find the right group of people, the right band, or even just the right keyboardist or guitarist, or if you can even play for yourself, that's a bonus. Um, I think you should just do what feels right to you. That's that's the most important thing because right now everyone wants to copy each other. Everyone wants to do what is the trending, what is doing what is doing the numbers. But that's not always authentic, and that won't always last. So whatever feels right to you, you should do that. Yeah. But if there's something else you can add, um, not really in the way of advice, but there's something I would like to mention. Go ahead. Um, but you had said earlier that I can mm. Um when we were talking about um performances, yes. When I first got when I got the award, I think most obviously many Kenyans don't know me and many and, and it's it's okay because I'm very I'm not mainstream. But I think it's it's very um presumptuous to assume that an artist um doesn't um the word doesn't deserve but like has to cut corners to 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 get an accolade especially and i think if if we paid more attention to what the little person is doing as mm. opposed to wanting to immediately be against it mm. i think the industry can grow because i feel like oh the african music scene is huge yeah you know it's it's huge and when i when i went to dakar and i saw how much the people love their artists it really it really disappointed me because i was like kenyans would never so i Are think there are certain you know people comments that insinuated that you might not have deserved your award or those that... are all the comments that were there eh, it was crazy because really like instead of congratulating you it was like Two percent congratulations. Okay, so I didn't read the comments. So what, what happened was, what were the was, comments saying? Like, <laughs> how did you get this award or what? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know okay, how. Yes. This so embarrassing, guys. Stop it was it. embarrassing. Stop it, guys. Stop <laughs> it. You have to stop it. If you're watching Mudaka and you know you were negative towards her, eh. stop it. Eh. 
<laughs> no, it was because most of them were like, uh, who is she? We don't know who she is. Uh, maybe her music is played in Uganda. Oh, she went and bought the award. Oh, these days you just have to have connections to get awards. These awards are fake. And it's God. like, I, I, get, I get that people would be shocked that someone like me who's not known would win. But when you think about it, if I had the connections enough to win an award, wouldn't I have the same connections enough to make you know me? Like, say, I would use that connection to also, like, do more marketing for you to know me. Like, it doesn't make sense that I would have enough money to and buy a for, trophy. For, for, for me, I feel like you don't even need to, to explain to them anything because I'm like, if, if, they, if you don't know her, then you need to do your job. Yeah. Because I always say, like, when, <laughs> when we say we need the industry to move forward, how do we move the industry forward? Yeah. People like to talk a lot, say, uh, the media this, the artist this, mm-hmm. but every single person has a, a, a role to play. Yeah. So as a music fan, my role to play is to discover you, to be able yeah. to listen to your music. So if I see you've won and I don't know you, I need to go and listen to your music. Yeah. Not yeah. to be like, who are you? I don't know you. Yeah. Because you, I need to educate myself. Exactly. So exactly. people out here need to educate themselves. Yeah. yeah. It's just like support the artist. Like when yeah. you say play Kenyan music. Let's actually play. Let's actually go out and, and, and watch them perform. I think that's an inspiration to you to keep at what you keep doing. Yeah. To keep showing them um, who you are. To yeah. keep releasing new music. Yeah. Um, I saw you, ha- you had a collaboration with Sage, Sage. Which is so, so, so like such a match made in heaven. Oh, thank you. Which other collaborations should we maybe look out for between Mudaka and some of her other favorite artists? There are so many collaborations <laughs> that I don't want to jinx. Yeah. But let me just say so that maybe Labda will our push. Um, there's a song, actually there are two or three songs that we've, or two that we've worked on with uh, Ben Soul mm. that I'm hoping can come out very, very, very soon. Okay. Um, you are also in Idaham's album. Yes. That was cool. That, that was, was really beautiful. cool. Yeah. Shout out to Idaham's. He's a Nigerian uh, artist who had an album and I had the pleasure of being a part of, of it. I did a song with him. I also did a song with another Nigerian, uh, but Kenyan-based artist called Praise. Mm. Um, which other artist can I send? Or like any Jinx? Name drop, name drop, name drop. Uh, <laughs> I have, have oh, I have like five songs with with Mordecai from Hat the Band. Nice. Uh, I have a song that we should have coming out with Ethan, Ethan Muziki. Oh wow, I love um, Ethan. He's and so I love talented. You too, so that's gonna be dope. Yeah, it's a really, really beautiful song. I hope it comes out. We had been talking with Emma Cheruto oh, and working nice. on a song. So there's a even Watenda Willie. There's a track we worked on. So I'm hoping Nikki nice. Zema ibisisa watapata challenge yaku changa mki Nice, nice, nice. So yeah. Uh, well done, well Thank done, you. well done. Is there any other thing that you'd like to tell, especially your diehard fans? I think we spend a lot of time ah. telling off those people who are dissing. Those are my haters. <laughs> now we can spend some time <laughs> to, you know, um, give off the love that you receive as yeah. well. Uh, I just want to say thank you. I think that's the most important thing because I know I had literally the smallest, like when you numbers, when it comes to maybe social media, as opposed to all the other amazing female acts I was nominated against. So I know for me to have gotten more than them means mm. my, my listeners and my family and my friends are very, very, very dedicated mm. to helping me. So I want to say a very big thank you. It's, it's only because of your votes and for keeping up with me bothering you on Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> and all those times I wasn't really supposed to be calling, but I called. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much to everyone who listens. And even the new listeners, uh, thank you so much for for the messages that I get um, when you relate to my songs and when you want more music. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I would just like to extend that grace now to all my other fellow upcoming artists and even established artists. I think it's beautiful when you see people want more from you and want to listen and and, mm. and want to hear your stories. Yes. So I just want to say thank you. And um, I hope we can continue growing the industry that way. And yeah. Whoa, thank you so much. Thank it's been you. so amazing to see you, to meet with you, to talk to you, to get to the bottom line of what makes yeah. you do what you do and how you do it. I'm very happy to see you start to get the um, attention from around Africa. And I think mm-hmm. it's the start of many big things. Um, I'll always be rooting for you. I love your music. I'm such a fan. Thank um, you. And thank you for coming to VIP Access. Ah, after so why you like this? <laughs> ah, you gonna I wasn't even over here at six a.m. waiting, ah, just but chilling. You're, you're already here like an hour before, so I, I yeah. loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is where we are capping off VIP access this week with the amazing Mudaka. Please listen to her music. 
go over to all the social media platforms um, and digital streaming platforms as well. Follow her, listen to her music, listen to her record, Sunshine. It's Yay. amazing. And um, keep supporting Kenyan music, African music. Next week, I'll be back here with yet another amazing artist that you would love to hear their story. Ciao. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.